So tonight I am going to speak on the word truth. There you go. In John chapter 18, verse 38, Pilate said to Jesus, What is truth? And so, I believe the Lord had me speak on this tonight. And so, that is what Pilate said, but I also want to look at John chapter 8, verse 32. What did Jesus say? Even though this was much earlier, but this is what Jesus said. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. When we consider the word truth, I think a lot of images go through our minds and we wonder what truth means, just like that slide just before. Uh, some people believe that it's okay to tell a white lie. It's not really not the truth, etc., uh, etc. Et I want to tell you a little story. As a little boy, and uh, this truly happened. And I was eating an apple in our house. And as I bit into this apple, a piece of the apple fell on the floor. Well, that was not allowed in my house. I can't have trash on the floor. So I promptly bent, bent down to pick it up in order to get rid of it, to dispose of it. And where do you think I threw it away at? In the trash can? No, I threw it in the bathtub. Figure, you know, figure a young kid's mind. Well, my dad discovered the piece of apple in the bathtub. And uh, so he cornered me. He said, Fred, did you throw the piece of apple in the bathtub? Now, I have a brother and a sister, and I figured, you know what? How does he know? It could be any one of us three. And I did not want to get in trouble. So I denied it. I make a long story short, he found out that it was me. And I got punished for lying, more so than for anything else. But my question tonight is, is that what John chapter 8 talks about when Jesus said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free? I don't think so. And if you just bear with me as I lay a little bit of a foundation of what I am to, to share with you tonight, we are going to look at John chapter 8 verse 31. And Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciple indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, I want to explore this a little bit more, and we're going to go to John chapter 1, and we're going to read the first five verses. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Now, all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. See, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So when we talk about the subject of truth in, this, in, in John, it's probably not talking about what you tell, 
but it's more so talking about a person. And if truth is a person, it's not mere information. It is much, much more than that. Let me explain, and this is a, a, a scripture. When I delved into John chapter 11, I can tell you I could stand here for four hours and just talk on John chapter 11. But we are going to read several portions out of John 11 just to get going on where we are going with this. Now a certain man was sick. This man's name was Lazarus of Bethany, which was the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, the sisters sent to him and saying, Lord, behold, he who, whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her, sister, and, and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. I want to take a little bit of a rabbit trail here. Now, just a minute. Emergency. Emergency. Lazarus is sick. You need to come right now. And what does Jesus do? He stayed two more days in the place where he was. Kind of reminds me of Jesus in the boat and the storm. When he was sleeping. Lord, we are drowning. And what does he do? He's sleeping. Well, we're going to find out a little bit more about that because many times some issue happens in our life and we cry out to God and it seems as if He's not there at all. So, verse 11. And after that, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. <coughs> However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest in the sleep. Now listen to this. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And listen to the statement. And I am glad... For your sakes that I was not there. Well, wait a minute. You know, Britt and I had a conversation. When was that? Monday morning? Tuesday morning? Monday morning. And uh, we had a great time just sharing with, with one another what God is busy doing in our life. And many times when we are faced with obstacles or giants or mountains. We don't understand why didn't he show up right away? Why is he asleep? Why is he glad that he wasn't there? But you see, our faith is built up not when all the provisions automatically come all the time. Our faith is built up when we fall on our knees and we seek the Lord with all of our heart. See, you don't need faith when everything is fine. You need faith when everything is going south. But I want to come back to the lesson of truth. So when Jesus came, finally, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem. 
about two miles away. And many, hold on, I'm on the wrong slide here, all right? There you go. I apologize. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort and concerning their brother. Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know, I know that whatever you ask of God, will, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Now, Martha said, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus has said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into this world. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. She said the same thing as her sister. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said, Lord, come and see you. And Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave. And a stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench. For he has been dead four days. <coughs> Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now, when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. You know, when Jesus sets you free, you are free indeed. Now, I want to talk a little bit about Mary and Martha. We've heard of Mary and Martha before. If you look back in Luke, Jesus came to visit them, which is something he did quite frequently. And Mary came and sat at his feet. She wanted to be close to him. She wanted to learn from him. She wanted to receive from him. Martha, on the other hand, was scurrying around, preparing everything. They had, there was a lot of serving that had to be done. See, Mary established a relationship. Martha, Jesus actually rebuked her. 
and said, Martha, you are worried and anxious and troubled by so many things. So I want to recap just a little bit, if you would bear with me. Go back to John. And we're going to start at verse 21. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And remember Jesus said, your brother will rise again. And then this discourse started with Martha explaining that she understood that he was going to rise again in the end. Right? You see, Martha had her doctrine all figured out. She had read the word, she had listened, she was taught good, and she had packaged it in a nice package. This is what I believe. Now, Mary said exactly the same thing. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And then verse 35, it says, and Jesus wept. What is the difference here? See, I don't think Jesus wept because Lazarus died. I believe Jesus wept because he was moved with compassion for Mary. She was able to move his heart because she had that relationship that Martha did not have. When we talk about truth, you cannot reduce the person of truth to a mere doctrine. If you do A, then B is going to happen. See, Martha's faith was in the doctrine of the resurrection. That is why Jesus had to correct her and said, wait a minute. I am the resurrection. Mary's faith was in the person who is the resurrection. You see, it is possible that we have our belief systems all in order, but have no life. I think it's also possible that we have all of our ducks not quite lined up, but yet we have life. It reminds me of a friend of mine, his name was Gary. When Gary accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, I mean, he was so in love with the Lord. It was amazing. He would, he, you know, people would come into his store, he would pray for them, and they would fall into, uh, under the Spirit of, uh, of the Holy Spirit. They would fall down. But yet, Gary would still smoke, and the occasional cuss word would still come out of his mouth. See, he didn't have all his doctrine lined up. All he knew is, I love the Lord Jesus. And he wanted to share it with everybody. And the grace of God overcame his shortcomings. See, Martha got a good teaching about resurrection. But Mary got the resurrection. Mary's understanding of the situation was just as wrong as Martha's. But because Mary had the relationship with the Lord, she was able to move his heart. So much so that he went. You need to understand 
that as we acquire knowledge, that by doing so we are still partaking of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And in doing so, we are still separating ourselves from the true Spirit of God. Instead of partaking of the tree of life, which is reconciling us with God. <coughs> See, truth is not what we tell a person. It's not what we tell. Jesus said, I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 8, 13, 8, 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So if truth in this scripture is a person, then we could say, and you shall know Jesus. And Jesus will make you free. It's not the knowledge that sets you free. It's the Savior that sets you free. Amen. You see, and as we pray and as we move along on this journey that we are in, we many times find ourselves at a lack and say, Lord, well, my faith is just not strong enough. But you need to understand that faith does not come by mere formulas and principles. Having faith in what you believe is not going to cut it. Let me say that again. Having faith in what you believe is not going to cut it. It's not enough. I think we confuse knowledge with truth. I think we confuse doctrine with truth. Because knowledge and doctrine is what we have acquired by learning. But truth is a relationship with the life giver. In other words, have a relationship with Jesus. The I am. Because in Him, you have everything. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, For all, all the promises are yes, and in Him, amen, to the glory of God through us. See the promise of healing. The promise of deliverance. The promise of provision and peace. The promise of resurrecting, uh, resurrection from the dead, etc., etc., etc. Are found by being in Him. They're found by knowing Him intimately. Not knowing about His ability. Martha had the knowledge that Jesus had the ability. Mary, however, moved him because she had a relationship. I believe the Lord's hand is always extended to those that really, truly love him. See, I, I, I have to think about Judas, who betrayed Jesus. Judas was committed to the cause, but he was not committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I think so many times we are committed to what we believe instead of committed to the person. Romans 10 verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
You cannot hear without having a relationship. I was with Youth of the Mission in the country of Namibia. And we were a team doing ministry, maybe about 30, 32 young people strong. And we were camped in a um, RV park. Now, I'll never forget this. This one night, this, one of the other campers came up to us and started talking with us. And he said to us, he said, you know, I've read the Bible from cover to cover. And I just don't agree. I can't, don't get it. I read all these horrible stories. See, the word of God did not come alive to him because he did not have a relationship. But when you have a relationship, then suddenly the word of God comes alive. But tonight I want to ask you, how is your relationship with your Savior? Is it that intimate that you hear Him, that you know this is what my Savior said in my ear? Because if you know what the Holy Spirit is saying to you, right here in your heart, then it's not that difficult to apply faith to it. It's when you move by your knowledge. Well, I believe in the ability that God can heal me. And then you pray and nothing happens. But when you have that relationship, where you get that assurance that nobody can take from you, that this is what God taught me, and therefore I will stand on this word, and therefore it shall come to pass. In closing, I want to share one last scripture. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. When you have that intimate relationship with the Lord, truly intimate relationship with the Lord, then I believe that you can know God's thoughts. And you can know God's ways. But it's going to require for you to be that close. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Jesus. Lord, we desire to be one with you. Help us to be knit to you. Totally knit to you. In Jesus' name.